uh, tonight we got a match between Viscerai and Prism. And Seb and I will be uh, bringing you the action. Exactly. Looks like uh, Viscerai has uh, elected to go first. I can't imagine that uh, Alex would let him go first. Just It'll a rune champ arsenal pass. pets. Yeah, no. By the way, we have our teammate Alex Sneed on Prism tonight, and the other team is on Viscerai. Yep. All right, so uh, fairly standard armor setup from Alex. Halo of Illumination, Vestige of Soul, Phantasmal Footsteps. Looks pretty standard. Yeah. Do you think... Uh, his deck will be a little bit more focused on heralds, or do you think he's going to be a bit more focused on uh, on auras? Depends on what he teched for. Um, mm -hmm. If Viscera is going OTK, I think he might just want to throw as many heralds at them as possible because with the ruling, they can still attack auras and keep their rune chance and not blow them up so they can actually deal with you know throwing their sword at an aura every turn so unless you set up a couple mm -hmm. but i think either strategy is fine against them but with the uh the herald strategy you are throwing at least 12 damage at them most turns and they're gonna have to choose do i want to create rune chance or do i want to block out here does herald of judgment actually do anything against viscerai um no but it is just a six attack under costed for two mana so yeah hmm okay interesting okay so with uh with viscera it looks like this is going to be a more otk setup actually yeah um although i mean we, we it's hard to say at the moment but uh the fact that he has defense reactions uh and is playing a little bit more defensively and we haven't seen any like uh, attacks that get reduced by the number of root chance. Uh, makes me think that uh, this is probably an OTK deck here. Especially just passing back, you know, blocking out. Probably mm -hmm. just going in for try to kill you on one turn. Yep. Which is an interesting matchup because Prism has ways to, you know, quote unquote, gain life mm -hmm. with spectral shields. Yep. So it kind of does. That's with the math there. For the Viscerai player. The, one of the uh, red read the runes is already used, so that is uh, something to consider. That is uh, one of the premium cards that he would like to combine with uh, Mordred Tide. Alright, looks like that's going to hit. Creating a Spectral Shield. Mm -hmm. And he has go again because he has a yellow pitch. Looks like... And he's just going to play out a huh. undercosted Herald because of Vestige activation. So that's pretty good. Yep. And now he can attack twice. I mean, he, I presume he attacked with the Spectral Shield already and then put down the Merciful. Alright, so the Viscerai took a round of damage here. Generally, they don't need four cards to we might see progress like a, their plan, yeah. We'll probably see like a Mordred Tide into like become the Arcanite or something like that if he wants to accelerate that many cards. Mm -hmm. So yeah, starting with the Whispers Blue, that's pretty much a telltale tale that this is going to be an OTT, OTK deck. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep, ah, <laughs> Mordred Tide. There's a Mordred Tide. Oh, Mordred double Tide. Mordred Tide. Yeah. Oh, there you go. No wonder he didn't go. block. And then Into... a red, yellow, yellow read the runes. That's still very good. So making quite a few rune chants here. And I've actually played OTK Viscerai a couple mm -hmm. times, and I've actually played it against Alex playing Prism, so he kind of knows this matchup. Mm -hmm. And I think the... Viscerai player, he's just doing a race to, I think the sweet spot is like 20, or is yeah. it 22? Yeah, you want an even number, Yeah, uh, and it yeah. looks like he's already well on his way there. 
Although yeah. that is two Morgan tides already gone. So uh it is interesting because yeah. like when I'm playing the OTK Viscerai deck, usually if I can, I want to set up a Mortar Tide on the turn I play Sonata. That way when I'm playing my meet and greets out, they're hitting, making two rune chants Viscerai. He's making two rune chants for every single right. rune blade attack that you're playing. And it can actually mm -hmm. get really overwhelming fast like that. Oh, that's... Yeah, that's a very interesting, interesting play there. Looks like uh, Alex is going to make a Spectral Shield. Yep. And he's doing and... the... I'm going to gain some life here. <laughs> in a, yep. in a, in effectively gaining life because they are preventing damage when all mm -hmm. this is coming out at him. Yep. And all, this little bit of life gain is actually quite important because yep. oftentimes the OTK player just barely gets there. Yep. So, yep. So this That's Herald of Triumph, mm -hmm. there's some chance this gets blocked by, like, a Ninth Blade or something, if you happen to have drawn it. Yeah, um, it looks like he sided in Command and Conquerors. I assume he's got Ninth Blades and the mm -hmm. other six attack Rune Blade card. Mm -hmm. um, I forget the name of it off the top, but it's the one of the ones that reduce for every Rune Chant you have. Right. Mm -hmm. Yep. So he has quite a few things that can blow up heralds. Yep. Even triumphs. This. If Alex does get this off, that's pretty good for. Oh, there's the ninth blade. Yep. Yep. He probably was debating like, do I block with this? Because as a Viscerai player, you're like, do I really want to get rid of this? And then bank on seeing another one later in the game, but sometimes you just have mm. to. Sometimes you just have to let the Sonata rip and uh, hope that you <laughs> yep. get it. Exactly. Um, it is a... Is it actually more likely that the Arsenal card is a Sonata or a Ninth Blade? Uh, Sonata, for sure. Is that necessarily or... the case? Nope. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> because... Yeah, here here's what I've been thinking is like he's he's been um I, I don't know. I I I got so, uh, some sense that based on like his blocking that this was not quite an OTK deck because an OTK deck is generally very quick about their blocks. They're like I don't need these cards block. Yeah. Right? He he was contemplating two turns of well like last turn was his Mordred Tide turn, fine. Maybe uh, he was trying to set up yeah. uh, a Sonata turn, but he's like, this is going to take me way too long. I'm going to take too much damage, and he's seeing building up a Merciful with two Spectral Shields, and that's just going to slowly keep on going. And I, he doesn't want to be I on the like back foot. I'm firmly of the opinion here that this is a mistake. Either not just in terms of the tactic here but of the strategy as a whole like if you're gonna go otk you go hard otk i yeah i don't see why you would make all the way to 15 rune chance granted though he did kind of stumble into two mordred tides so it's not like he could kind of control how many rune chance he was making so i mean this is way more rune chance than you normally see with a with a spell blade assault <laughs> So, normally you, you see like four or five rune chance and then an attack, four or five rune yeah. chance and then an attack. So, Usually you wanna, either, yeah, he, it's the either he hasn't damage. drawn correctly or I feel like there could just be some conflicting overarching strategy here. Like, um, it's, it's possible this is not like an OTK deck. This could yeah. be a tempo deck. Yeah. Just interesting. So, yeah, it is interesting. Looks like there's going to be another Merciful Retribution played out here. <laughs> Which is uh, quite interesting here. He said, I'm not going down without a fight, all right? <laughs> yeah. Going to take... Going to return some damage here. So a ton of arcane damage coming across here. And four points of physical as well. 
So that should be 15 and 13 plus 4. But with plus the two three. Mordred Tides gone, he can't really do this again, right? Unless he gets yeah. a really lucky hand. Yep. I mean, I guess, I guess this, I mean, Skeleta is still not bad if you have like four or five. Yeah. Like it, it can, it can still do some work. So yeah. Okay. It's, it's interesting. I'm just more used to a very, very, very defensive uh, deck that does not attack until it's, until it's time. Right. So this is kind of interesting. I guess with Rosetta Thorn, that actually indic We should have been tipped off slightly by the Rosetta Thorn, because most OTK decks are running... Um, well, not always, but... Actually, in this matchup, Rosetta Thorn is probably still better, but they, they, they tend to like Reaping Blade. Yeah, yeah. So... But in this matchup, Reaping Blade obviously has no use, so... The Rosetta Thorn actually didn't tip us off anything. So... So he's coming in oh. here with a War Tune Herald, so he's basically saying, even if you blow this up, I'm still gonna <laughs> ping you for one. Yep. With Merciful. So it looks like that Spellblade Assault was actually targeting one of the Retributions. So, so one of them is down. Who would you say has the advantage at the moment? Kind of hard to say, because Viserai... It looks like he can probably get back into this game pretty quickly with five rune chants set up already. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, if Alex is going to be able to return these heavy hands and he's going to block them, it's going to be difficult. That, shouldn't have that War Tune Herald gone to soul? It hit, right? Uh, no, it's six. It's a yellow. Oh, right. It didn't block. Okay. Uh, I didn't get in. Why did awesome. why did the didn't he? I don't know, maybe I'm not. He blocked with two sure. cards. Okay, interesting. Okay, and Alex gonna you know Ooh, a Genesis. coming out and yeah, and then playing the Genesis very powerful here. Yeah. So he's already gonna be accelerating spectral shields, putting a card in his soul, which is going to turn Vestige on and make his turn even cheaper. Yep. Genesis is one of the most threatening cards. In the deck, I would it say a... as soon as you see Genesis, no matter what hero you're playing, you just gotta go. Okay, I'm attacking into this. <laughs> Even if you're playing a super aggro deck like Briar, and you think you can kill them, and you're not really caring about the other auras, I think Genesis is just one of those that the Prism deck can, you know, turn the tide so quick on you with that card. Yep. And if he finds a arc like Sentinel, I don't know if he's playing it, but if he does find an arc like he Sentinel, pitched one, so he is playing it in the deck. He pitched one already. In his uh, next draw phase, uh, this could get uh, this could snowball quite a bit. Whoa! And you're seeing here that since that yellow pitch for three, because of Genesis mm -hmm. turning on the Vestige, he's able to make a Spectral Shield and attack with the war tune herald for five yep very nice nice and efficient yes so the game is about halfway concluded here and we still haven't seen any um tome of divinity on uh, alex's side that's a key card to use mm -hmm. in combination with uh, the Halo. Yeah. So if if he draws a uh, Tome in the coming turns, I fully expect to see him uh, utilize it before the health totals get too low that it becomes uh, a bit more clunky of a card to use. I mean, sometimes you have a Tome and you have Arclight in your hand and your opponent plays something scary and you're just like... Even though I don't want to, I'm going to have to Tome just to get this arc light off. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, the Viscerite player is still thinking about blocks here. Looks like he's going to use his armor. Indicating that he... Uh... 
taking Has one here, good letting Alex. Back here. Yeah, and he's letting Alex put that card into soul. So, generally, what I think is, if a, the opponent puts down a Genesis, mm. I'm going to be defending and then keeping a card to swing at the Genesis. Yeah. Instead of keeping four cards here, but we can't see his hand, so maybe it makes sense because. Like, if, if this Amplify the Arc Knight is heading towards the Prism's face, then the Genesis was gonna, is going to survive. Mm -hmm. um, unless he Look. just has... Oh, it has Go again, right? An, yeah, it has Go again from the Mortar Tide, so he mm -hmm. could very easily have a um, the, Reduce to Ruin, which the one that has four for... This three whole cost play reduces, pattern. Yeah. This, but, but this whole play pattern was a giant risk because as soon as he put down Mordred Tide, Alex could have responded with Arc Like Sentinel and then his whole mm -hmm. turn is ruined, right? Yeah, so for sure. That's why I feel like w generally when the opponent puts down a Genesis I and then s attacks me, I'll block mm -hmm. and then keep a card to attack the Genesis, maybe Arsenal card. Because keeping a four card hand here is extremely risky. It now, looks like Alex looks like... might be pitching for something here. Oh, he's pitching for the um, arcane damage. So it looks like Alex is going to take the block route on this one. I don't agree with that because those cards were blocking for three, and then they essentially blocked for two here. The deck size does not matter, and there's still some stuff to follow up here. So he's actually going to be taking two extra damage that he didn't need to this turn. I I think it was because he was trying to save the Spectral Shield, but I think he's losing it no matter what. So I think, especially with the Air Edition, he could have had a nice little possible comeback there with uh, one card in Air Edition. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, so here I think he just valued keeping the Spectral Shield um, and trying to do the, the long poke game. I mean, with Go Again on the Amplify the Arc Knight, there was... Wait, hold on. The Rosetta Thorn survived that turn? Or sorry, the Spectral Shield survived that turn? Yeah, because he just um he just went and attacked Genesis after that. Oh, right. So the Arc yeah. Damage ac actually didn't fly over. Okay. Yep. Huh. Okay, so he did succeed in sa saving his Spectral Shield. So that was... Okay, so that was actually... I would consider that both decisions about equal there. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. But now the uh, the Vistar player has a ton of tempo here. Mm -hmm. and... and I don't think... Yep, I don't know if he can really type. play the block game unless his hand allows him to. Mm -hmm. Because with Prism, it's really easy to get a hand that doesn't really do anything but block and then get a hand that can't block at all. Yep. So... Okay, it looks like the arcane damage is being blocked here. And the one floating to activate footsteps, throw that in front of it. Yep. And one spectral shield in front of it as well. So that means no damage. Rune flash. That's coming at him for four yep. go again. With three arcane. Yep. Very, very. Rune Flash is a very, very powerful card if uh, if you can align things correctly. So, does Alex take 11 here and just kind of let his opponent deal some damage and then he comes back with a three card hand? Or. Um. Oh, he's blocking. I, I feel like, yeah, I feel like he kind of wants to set up a Tome of Divinity turn, uh, if possible. The, uh, that's kind of the whole reason to run Halo, right? Like, yeah. if he doesn't get a Tome of Divinity turn, then, yeah. Yeah, if you're not, if you're not playing Tome of Divinity like you cited it out, then you're pretty much uh, playing Skullcap. Because at least you're getting block value out of that. So mm -hmm. he's definitely playing them in the deck. We just have not seen them yet. Mm -hmm. 
All right, looks like he opts to take five there to return a little oh. bit of damage here. This is definitely an interesting game because we've seen the Viscerai player play out two Mordor Tides. I think between blocks and playing out, he's played out three or four Marvin Skies. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, he's definitely running the blue and the uh, yellow version. Yeah. Uh, so he might be running out of those soon. This is a nice little swing for Alex because since he doesn't have any room chance, he can't really do much next turn, and he's yep. pushing this break point here. Yep, and if he's caught with a reduced rune chant in hand, that essentially becomes a, a, a dead card or a very, very inefficient card, and it yes. looks like he does have that reduced rune chant. Yep. That is a so very Alex getting great tempo value. positive. Yeah, yeah. Very, very tempo positive there. And Sonata going in Sonata. Here. And okay, that's so a, a he gets hit an E strike. The, yeah, he's going to take the E strike unless he badly needs the energy. Yep. Uh, looks like he badly needs the energy. Huh. Has something else in mind. I guess a attack with go again into a two two one. Possible. Let's see if Alex decides to block the arcane here and go on the defensive this turn or try to return some damage. Yep. This is not as sending one arcane over. It's I think pitching a blue here is is not bad because you're you're gonna get a value out of that, a value out of the thorn, and then a value out of the footsteps. So mm -hmm. it's basically blocking for three here, and it also shuts down anything like uh, meat and greed or something like that. Yep. So I think if he has a blue, he'll definitely choose to block. Looks like he did not. Uh, slight indication that Alex does not have a blue. Alright, so the Viscera player here, again with priority. Huh. Going for it again. Gonna get to Amplify the Arc Knight. Another uh, arcane flies over, and another oh, rune chant is created. He didn't put those on in his deck. Yeah, did he? He put them on his the top of his deck, but did not shuffle. Correct? Is that what just happened? Or I think he just slid him in the graveyard on accident. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, those should definitely be in the deck and shuffled. He definitely want that third mortar tied in the deck. <laughs> yes. Um. Yeah, looks like there's some chat going on now. Yep, looks like yep. that was corrected. It yep. now. Yeah, those are two very important cards in this Rattle Bones and Mortar Tide. So the Viscerite player definitely wants to keep those. And so we know he has the blue in his hand, and he has the the reduce mm -hmm. six attack card. So he can definitely play that out. And then if he has a Mordor tied in Arsenal, he'll probably go in with a Rosetta after that. Oh, he's going Rattle Bones. Okay, that's why he took the blue. Mm. So he can play out the Rattle Bones. Yep. Since he's played a non-attack action, this gets played out as an instant, giving him two action points. Yeah, this is one of the cards that uh, sometimes you forget about until you play against it and get punished by it really badly. Then you're like, right, this is why I block <laughs> arcade damage. Yeah. It's because if... Yeah. Because if Alex would have blocked that Sonata ping... 
pitch to blue there, then he would not have been able to play this at instant speed. Yep. I was just about to mention Spellbound Creeper value here, and looks like Rattlebones was like indirectly Spellbound Creeper value. So. Oh, so he was playing it as an instant no matter what, I guess. Yep. He had a backup plan there. Yep. So he's going to go to his graveyard, find something. I haven't seen the Majestic. I don't think they play it. So what options does he really have here? Um, he can't play out the Ninth Blade. He can't... Maybe... Um... Maybe the Rune Flash. So he can go four, go again with three or uh, two Arcane, and then go in Rosetta Thorn. Yep, that sounds very reasonable. Because we know he has that six attack in hand, and he needs three rune chance to make it attack for Use free. It. Yeah, and yep. right now he only has one floating. So if if this thing, oh, or he could possibly get the um the spell blade assault, right? That's the one that mm -hmm. makes rune chance. So you could try to do that to try to force some more yep. rune chance, and then set up because he has yep. two action points set up for the six so... attack. Something that's probably going through his mind right now is the fact that um, Alex has not blocked this turn, did not yeah. block the arcane damage. So, I mean, he hasn't made a he hasn't made an attack yet, so it's a little bit hard to read. But just the fact that he did not block the arcane damage may indicate. Okay, I mean, so it looks Alex... like it's going to be a meet and greet. Okay. So this is going to be the card in hand into meet and greet into Rosetta Thorn. Yep. So this is going to be a... So now everything is basically face up here. Yep. So we got nine damage there. Split six and three. And then we got four damage. So presenting uh, pl lethal. Plus another rune chant. Yeah. Yeah. And then Rosetta Thorn is two two one there. So I don't think he has any energy to pay for that this turn, but Oh yeah, you're right, he does not. Unless he pops the skeleton. Ah, yeah. He could definitely do that. That that I think that's actually probably worth it. That represents four damage. It actually depends if, if Alex blocks here. Yep, for sure. Yeah. This is super is interesting. I didn't expect Viscerai to be able to turn it over this quickly. Mm -hmm. yeah. I thought from that initial attack, I was like, oh man, is that actually the correct play? And it looks like he kind of knows what he's doing. Yep. The mixed damage sources uh, mm -hmm. makes uh, defending quite tricky. It does, because Alex would need a blue here and two three blocks, and then he only has one card. Prism really needs two cards to do anything. Mm -hmm. the, the presence yeah. of rattle bones and meet and greet already make things very tricky. Yeah, because if you're if you're not blocking arcane, then they're they're getting maximum value from those cards. Exactly. Yep. If I had to guess, this is there's gonna be a block here. Yeah, I like, think Alex is just I, thinking because he knows he can't just take it, you know, and then try to come back. I f I feel okay. Ooh. Two cards that don't block. I feel like. There has to be some. Uh, he, he needs, had two he cards needs a Tome didn't... of Divinity turn. Like yeah, that. That is really the balance in the game. Here. Yeah. So this is going to be a block for three, and then take three. Yep. Turn off the skull cap. Sounds reasonable. And then he's going to full block this meet and greet, which is correct here, not letting him get that rune chant.
footsteps plus the uh yeah footsteps plus a food oh. block oh looks like he's gonna throw his vestige in front of this then or not block this okay okay that means the last card in hand does not block or that which makes it even more pass. interesting that he didn't um block uh, that it, could be a, it could be a, it could be a tome of divinity yeah that's going into the arsenal here nope just nope. wow that was just, a triple uh, no block hand that's a rough yeah. hand and that's what i was it, talking about with prism he, sometimes he, you the the unfortunate thing is the viscerite player had double action points there yeah so that actually played around like he had enough energy to uh use the arc like sentinel mm -hmm. but oh but it didn't matter i see it wouldn't matter there yeah that's the power of spellbound creepers and i mean rattle bones of course too that against the prison match that they those action points matter a lot and right here you see him he's just going four and two arcane with go again and then at any point he can just pop the skeleta to play a super big under cost of attack Definitely uh, not a great spot for Alex unless, like you said, he drew uh, Toma Divinity. It looks like he didn't. Looks like this is actually a fairly weak turn, though. Yeah. Wait, wait, the Halo does not... Okay. Oh, it's using the Spell Void there. Yeah, using the Spell Void... Huh. Okay. I don't want those effects that you forget sometimes, you know? Yep. I was like, wait a second, that doesn't block. Oh, no. Oh, yep. That does block. <clears throat> yep. And then blocking with a vestige, because even if he draws a tome, he's not getting value off of it anymore. Mm -hmm. Just trying to keep in the game. Which, hopefully, if this is a, an erudition or something, he can possibly have a good turn to get back into the game here erudition doesn't even cut it here oh okay library the library but n not too yellow so it's only pitch it's only drawing him four cards but unfortunately he drew it and he had to play it out mm -hmm. so that was that was a no block hand last turn and then a library hand this turn that's unfortunate for sure With Skeleta and Spellbound Creepers here, um, and five cards. I don't see how. And li likely Alex has nine block in his hand. I don't see how he survives here. As long as the Viscera player has a decent hand, there's just too many options here to break through for three. Yeah. Well, Josh, it looks like you're still going to be the best prison player on the team. <laughs> yep. <laughs> uh, best prison player NA right here. Yeah. First game beats Reinar. That's that's how you do it. This hand must be very complex here from... Uh... From the viscera player here and i guess yep. the spellbound creepers makes it very complex because yeah that single card opens up a ton of lines here and the spell yeah. and this and this blood sheath skeleta also creates some very very complex lines here looks That's like we I have uh... when, when i first started playing chain and at first i was still on snapdragon and I was like, Spellbound Creepers, you have to have a non-attack action, and it costs one resource. But after playing with the card a bit, I just realized that the the trap tricks that you can do are just invaluable. But it does open up a new line of thinking. Wow, so, is this just a pass here? He's ordering wow. his pitch. Okay, so looks like he survives another turn. I mean, that's An perfect action. for Alex. And actually, he can send 
two cards over. If he oh. can... Did he draw an extra card there? Looks like he has five. Oop. Oops. Or did he pitch two yellows? <gasps> oh, he did. He two yellows. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Max well, punished like fix. <laughs> I'll Thanks take it. Library, yep. Fix the library. I'll take it. Jeez, just imagine that on your off turn, <sighs> you just go, "Oh well, I can play library." Okay, so Alex here with the Celestial Cataclysm. The only unfortunate thing is that he will not be able to play out his library and drawing five cards. Yep. But he does have seven damage coming across. I yeah, wonder so how the Viserai many... player, <laughs> instead of spending the two yellows to blow up library, he goes, oh, no, no, we can keep this on the field. Yep. Especially I'll just when you use it. Tempo. Yep. Yep. Then Alex is attacking for one. Yep. So. Mordred your tide. This is going to be a lot of rune chance, I presume. Yep. Into the Sonata. Sonata. Looks like he's debating making it for X is one. Hmm. Nope. Looks like he's just going to roll. And that's a miss on all of them. Okay. Getting a little lucky here. The deck should be shuffled. There we go. Sonata exiled. Well. <laughs> That's pretty good so far. Basically two cards becoming two rune chants here. Yeah. Maybe we're seeing here like why the New Zealand players were valuing uh sorry, mm -hmm. valuing this deck so much. Mm -hmm. Because like it can do the uh I'm sure he has a sideboard where he can do full OTK, but he can also do this mid range strategy. And the fact that it can compete with Prism at the time before, you know, Lightning Briar and all that. That was the deck to fear deck to be scared of so you know what it looks like is he setting up yeah it looks like he's trying to set up this turn but that actually may come back to haunt him here depending on what that last card is so he's gonna make four rune chance here he's or... getting a ninth blade out no. and saying nine attack and nine damage right he <laughs> i mean so nine the... arcane and nine physical the mordred tide is still active so that's Three plus one, and then one plus one. So that's six more rune chance here. All right, so now he's at eight. Okay. Something doesn't... Something doesn't feel right about the number of rune chance here. Where did that ninth blade come from? Uh, so what he did is he... Um, use become to search. Oh, that's rattle, rattle bones. bones. Sorry, yeah. that's rattle bones. Not not. Sorry, I thought that was um, read the runes. Yeah. Sorry. So he used that. Okay. Th yeah, that makes then... much more sense. Okay. There we and, go. There we go. Yeah, he didn't even have to pitch there because blood chief says your next non-attack and attack action. So right. Uh, right. it got. So he, I, I believe this is game. You know, eight arcane and then eight physical damage. And now especially with red, yeah, with especially with a red prismatic shield, that's yep. not doing anything. And with that, that's game. Viscerai takes down Prism. All right, Alex, do the table flip. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Interesting. Interesting game. Uh, interesting game. But, um, let's get seeing let's a little bit more. Of, seeing a little bit more of the uh, power of uh, Viscerai. Yeah. Alex, are you in here? I am. Um...